Welcome to the 901 May Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Kreider, owner of the Insurance Shop of Tennessee and Odd Fellows South Company here in Carville. With us today is the Dr. Brandon Wally, owner of Carville Vision Center here in Carville. Dr. Wally, I'd ask you how you're doing, but I literally just did that like an hour ago. So it's true. Yeah. Uh, well, I like I like the doctor. <laughs> Um, I was trying to like buy a website, you know, just with my name on it, just because yes. somebody said you should do that. And uh, I did think about buying the Dr. Brandon Wally, but I, I did not do that. Well, maybe I should. I'm going to go in and buy it real quick and then sell it to you. So, okay. Thanks. Sucker. Um, <laughs> so let me tell you how excited I am about our guest today. Uh, she is the executive director of Leadership Carville, something that both of us did. Uh, she is a great friend to both of us and just an all around great human being. So Miss Tasha Holmes, how are you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? We're doing awesome. Good. 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 Uh, um, so we want to talk about leadership card though. I, I know it's been a weird year with COVID, uh, and all that stuff, but Everybody on this uh, call right now is an alumna of Leadership Carterville. So uh, all the cool kids are doing it. And uh, <laughs> we got classes. Uh, we got classes coming up. Uh, COVID kind of hindered it initially for the first of the year. Uh, but we're starting to get things back on track with everything. So uh, tell us a little bit about Leadership Carterville. Well, good morning, you guys. Thanks for having me. I, um, I'm i so excited to be here. Um, I think the world of you both, so I'm, I feel like I'm just here with good friends. Um, but um, I'm super honored to represent this amazing organization. Um, we are all alum, as you mentioned uh, earlier, Patrick. And um, above all, I know that uh, this organization helps to bond and create friendships and relationships sometimes business partnerships that um, you wouldn't have otherwise had had you not gone through the, through the class. Um, but Leadership Carnival um, started over 20 years ago, believe it or not, it's been that long. Um, and a few friends got together and decided that it was important that an organization was established in our town um, so that we can develop and create um, really this um, group of people who believe in uh, what we're doing and um, who want to find ways to invest in the in the uh, community in the town, and so um, it's it's one of the best and only, if I can say, uh, leadership um, programs that <clears throat> that operate in a really small town, but it really does have a big family feel. I would say it's almost like a prereq. Like if you want to do anything in Carterville or anywhere where they do these leadership classes, it's almost like you need to go through this before you even consider uh, doing anything else. I, I saw Absolutely. like most of the people that ran for Alderman, a good chunk of them were leadership alumni. Um, and I think uh, probably the school board as well. But uh, if I think if you want to go down that route or have any desire, not that that, not that you have to want to do those things, but it, it, it is definitely seems like a prereq to get into those things. I agree. I, I really agree. And, you know, I don't know how you could, um, well, I'm a little bit biased. Okay. So let me just, let me just change that. But, you know, if you really want to learn more about this town I, and you, probably would agree. There were places in this town that I literally had not seen and did not know about. And people who um, are years and years invested in, in Carnival that you get to learn about and know because of um, the time that you spend in leadership. So that's right. absolutely spot on, Patrick. Um, when you want to, to serve in this town, uh, I think you need to know this town. And, and Leadership Carnival is an amazing way to, uh, to get plugged in. I think it's cool too, because you get to see like how passionate all of these different people are. I mean, when we went to the library, the, the lady that gave us the tour at the library was so passionate about it. And, you know, she had this vision for the future and she wanted us to know about it and wanted everybody to know about it. And it was like that everywhere. I thought it was great. True, true. It was, it's more than just checking out a book. There are people behind the scenes who keep this town running. And um, it's almost like, you know, it's, a, it's your way of like investing back, right? Because people give a lot. 
Um, I think I had the same experience with the Y when we visited. I had no idea that um, that many people were working behind the scenes, um, making sure that services were provided to kids. And I don't know if you guys know that, you know, the work they're doing with COVID right now, um, providing places for parents um, if they, you know, have to work where kids can go and have their virtual classes. So, absolutely. It, it is kind of funny. Um, so when we went through the class, like there's different days, like there's one day that you meet uh, some of the local, I wouldn't say politicians, but some of the local leaders. And then there's a day that you meet some of the police uh, officers and uh, fire department. And uh, you do get to meet, we went to the library and all that, but all these different things take funding and all that. And it's funny because every single class that we had, um, there's always need for more funding for like everything, but uh, it's just funny because you sit there and listen to them talk and what they want to do. And you're like, just take all the money. We, we yes. yes. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> what can we do to get you more money? Yeah. Uh, so it, it's just interesting to see uh, almost pull, pull the curtain back and you get to kind of see behind the scenes on everything. Uh, yes. How it works. And that's, that's really so true, uh, Patrick, like, you know, with lots of nonprofits, right? It, it, you know, it's the passion behind the work that makes you really want to begin to invest your time and your talent, your treasure to figure out how can I keep this running? How can I support more kids? How can we um, invest more in adults in our town? So you're so right. It, it really does take funding. Um, and um, I'm so glad that leadership is, is plugged in so that we can to help as much as we can. So there's two different classes. There's an adult class and a youth class. We're obviously, we did the adult class. Uh, uh, but I, I guess for those with kids that are in high school right now, um, tell us a little bit about the youth class and uh, maybe uh, also where they can find out more information. Absolutely. Um, so the youth class, we are so excited. Um, so I, I do want to pause. I should say thank you to both of you for um, for investing in and believing in the work that we do um, here at Leadership. Um, but the class is finally official. The application is open. Um, we will begin classes on January the 21st. Um, but before that, we will begin, uh, we'll have an orientation with parents this uh, December. And that's where they'll get a chance to know about the class, what's expected of them. Many of the classes will be Zoom um, so that uh, virtually so that they can, um, so we can continue to be safe, but we'll have some in-person planning sessions as well. But the youth class um, will have seven sessions. Um, we are so excited to be partnering with uh, a lot of folks around town who uh, will help us to create some of those same classes that we're used to having. Um, we're also going to be adding some new classes. Um, given, you know, what's happening um, in our nation and in our world, we want to make sure that we feel like kids are prepared to leave um, high school, to go out to either career or college um, and ready to, to work and serve. Um, also, I'll share that um, in the past, we had only opened it up to sophomores and juniors. And this year, we are expanding it and offering, um, you know, the class to seniors. Uh, many of them uh, need um, more community service hours. Uh, some of them, quite frankly, are um, in need of this leadership opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, what we hope to do this year is to get them ready to go to college or career uh, in serving in their community. They will also get opportunities to meet our legislative team locally and um, in, the, in Tennessee. So we're, we're excited that we're still going to be able to pull that off, even though it'll look a little different this year. Um, but one of the things we've added is resume writing and interviewing. Um, some of them will be getting ready to go to college, and they probably never interviewed before and you know don't know what like a resume should look like right. um so we'll incorporate that into the class this year there's also going to be a um leadership insight where they'll take personality class so they'll kind of get to know like who are you as a leader like i think we wait until i know for me i was a little older when i did leadership and i didn't realize that like i need to figure out like where my strengths are like where should i be focusing my time i know when i went to college i was just like I don't know what I want to do, but I'm going to go. 
Um, yeah. But hopefully this gives them an opportunity to say, okay, you know what, I'm really stronger, you know, in, you know, building and perhaps, you know, should I be partnering with a, a, a builder or a construction company so that I can, you know, get more experience or I really like math and science and, you know, can I, you know, go and work with Dr. Brandon um, a couple of days or talk to him to see what it is that he actually does. And so we're excited that the, the, the class will also provide for them sort of a, um, a focus path so they can be thinking about like, what is it that I want to do? Who am I as a leader? And what do I want to do um, beyond this? Because I believe, and I've always said this when I was a teacher, that these are the young people who will be caring for us when we age, right? Like these are the kids that will be filling our prescriptions, um, you know, fixing our cars or, you know, repairing our refrigerators. And I want to make sure that like I've done my part or we've done our part in investing and getting them ready to do that. Awesome. So uh, the adult class also will probably look a little bit different as well, but um, um, what are some things that people can expect that are interested in the adult class? And then how many people, like, um, uh, how many people can actually do a class? I think our class, if I remember, was maybe 20, 25, something like that, a group of that many. So uh, tell us a little bit about the adult class. Okay. Oh, oh, thank. Good question. So, for both classes, like our goal this year, we'd like to have about thirty-five in class. Okay. Given that we have a virtual space, we can accommodate more people. Um, we'll do something very clever with like breaking the groups up in small groups so that we can accommodate, you know, both the groups. Mm -hmm. um, but the adult class will start on January fourteenth. Super excited. Um, I have, a, I really have a, my heart for the adult class too, um, because we did go through, but we will have some of the same tenants that we did when we went through. There'll be a government day, there'll be a um, altruism day, um, but we're also going to be adding a real strong leadership tenant lens so that um, folks can, we'll do a book study this year. Um, and it's really all about like again, who you are, like, what do you believe as a leader? And what I want to do, um, Patrick, is for adults, when they finish this class, they should be able to use this as sort of professional development. So if you work for an organization that says, hey, you know, I've got PD hours, or, you know, I can spend money on professional development, this is money that they can, you know, they could invest and get yeah. professional development. So when they walk away and they complete their evaluations for the year, they can really walk away with saying like, these are the areas that I focused on as a leader this year with Leadership Cargo. So that was the focus this year so that folks um, could uh, make this a dual, a dual thing. It could be personal and both professional where they walked away with having grown as leaders in their, um, in their respective uh, communities. Um, I'm super excited. We're going to have a still do a retreat. Uh, it's going to be sponsored by one of the local um, groups here in, in our, our region. Uh, Bridges is a partner this year and they've, they've, um, they've uh, signed up on with us to, to help us to pull off some of our activities, some in person, yeah. some uh, not in person, but um, we are committed to a safe a space where people can gather should they choose. Um, so we'll have options for people um, to do the hybrid um, option. So that's exciting. Um, we'll do a community bus tour, which is one of the old things that um, the old uh, group used to do back in the day. And we wanted to bring it back um, where we would get a chance to go around town and see some of the um, amazing places in our town. And um, our mayor, uh, Mr. Joyner is so excited to lead one of our town sessions um, about um, leadership in government. Um, he just recently was reelected, and so he is also an alum and um, is excited because what he said to me the other day was that he wanted to make sure we had a bench of prepared leaders who have one invested in our town and, and also a group of people uh, that they could pull from when we have vacancies. And um, he felt like leadership Cariba was the, was an amazing way to start for school board, for aldermen, um, or even our mayor uh, role. Um, many of them have, you know, of course been alumni. And so uh, he said, I want that bench to be filled with uh, leadership Cariba people. And, that, and I appreciate it uh, when he said that. So uh, what I this is this isn't so much leadership Carville specific, but this is kind of uh, just asking both of y'all when you did the class, 
was there a specific day that was your favorite day or what were some of your favorite moments when you did it? Cause we all went through it. So maybe we can share some of the moments that we enjoyed the most. Tasha, I'll let you, or you've been talking a lot. Brendan, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> so. Oh man. You know, the, uh, the retreat was really great. Um, I didn't know what to expect going into it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of heights and, and some of that stuff. So, um, but it's just funny that I can go to a, a social event and meet 20 people and maybe remember one or two of them. But at this retreat, it's like you go and you meet all these people and you know every single person's story. You remember their name. And then you get home and you've got like 20 requests on Facebook to be friends with all these people. And it's like your network just instantly expands and it's just really cool. And, and, and I don't know what it was, if it was the activities we were doing or just, but I remembered everything about everybody and, and see people in the grocery store, remember their name. And I've never had any other kind of thing like that happen before. So I thought it was great. Well, retreat was awesome. That's for sure. Uh, Tasha, what were some of your favorite moments? Oh, I would say definitely, I, I have to, I hate to echo the retreat, um, but the retreat was pretty fantastic. Um, I remember the very moment that I met both of you. I also remember uh, some of the fears that I conquered right beside many of you. Um, it, it was uh, an, an amazing uh, emotional sometimes, you know, uh, experience to conquer some things that uh, you didn't think you could. You just really didn't. It's like, okay. It's, and I remember at one time, Patrick, like um, there was a time and you were like, I gotcha, you know? And it was like, a, you know, so, and, and it's, that's been your, that's been our relationship and friendship since that moment, right? It's just like um, you create lifelong friends that you would not have otherwise. Um, that, that moment um, was really special. That was really special. Um, I, I'm a big giver. Um, so altruism day um, was big for me um, because I do have two uh, nephews who are autistic and I had no idea that there were opportunities like, the, you know, the, I can't remember the name of the company now, it, but they would. The horse, the, it's. The it's, horse. It's something rains. I, I, yeah, I'm Southern rains. Yeah, Southern rains. Southern yeah. rains. And as a result, um, my sister lives in Macon, and so this is all personal, but I was able to help her to find a very similar project for her boys. I didn't know it even existed. So, um, you know, it starts to open your eyes to things that, like, you know, in our lives, we just kind of go to, you know, the grocery store, we come home, we work, and we just kind of do care for our families. And you don't realize that all around you that there is um, a space in a community, in a town that's serving people uh, with real, you know, real needs. And um, it was really, I was really happy to, to learn that and be able to share it with my family. Yeah, I, I, I will piggyback to uh, the retreat was a big part of it for sure. But it, it is definitely one of those things where um, I don't know if out of the 20, 25 people in our class, even though we all live in the same town. If, if we would have crossed paths and ever like, even if we would have crossed paths, would we have become friends? And most likely, no, it would have been something maybe transactional or something like that. We never would have had the relationship that we have now. Uh, so that, that's the biggest thing. Uh, the, uh, the local nonprofits were huge. Uh, the Southern Rains is kind of interesting because my my parents actually did, or they actually just stopped doing it, but they had something very similar in the small town that I grew up in. And so it was kind of cool to see that there were more out there and uh, Southern Rains is a much bigger uh, outfit than what my parents had for sure. But uh, that was cool. But I mean, even just the fire station, the police, uh, things like that, uh, getting even the 911, the call center, uh, it, it's amazing, like, in a town that we all consider extremely safe, uh, the amount of calls and the amount of work that uh, they all have to do uh, to keep it safe. And, you know, uh, so it's, there's so many things, uh, I guess, to brag about as far as experiences that we had that it's too many to count for sure, but it, it is yeah. definitely... 
uh, one of the best things I've done since we've moved to Cargill, for sure. I know y'all are not going to say it, but I'll say it for you because <laughs> both of you guys are business owners. Um, one of the things that the organization does do, like if you have a, a business and a thriving small business, I mean, you get to, you know, you get to highlight what you're doing. I had no idea what either of you did, right? I didn't know that the insurance shop was a thing. I didn't know Brandon, Dr. Brandon, who is my new optometrist, um, would um, that had business here in town. So if you have a business and you want people to know more about it, um, this is a great opportunity to share and share the word. When people ask me on even the next door, they ask me like, who's doing insurance about, you know, I'm like, call Patrick Crowder. If he can't help you, he can definitely get you to somebody, but he's great. Um, so it's like putting a face with a business, not just a name, you know, um, and so I appreciated being able to, in our class, I feel like every field, we can really go to someone who can help us with some sort of, um, you know, some sort of area that we might need. I think, I think ours was a pretty diverse group of folks of all kinds of backgrounds and fields. And so that was one thing that I definitely appreciate too. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, full disclosure, I think me going into it, part of my uh part of me wanting to do it was uh to get more plugged in and uh and there was the business aspect that was behind that but once you go through it that's such a small part of you know the gratification that you get out of doing it like i don't probably going into it that would have been the main reason and that's probably out of a hundred that's probably 99 on the list of reasons why I would say somebody needs to do it now, but it definitely is a great thing for business owners and people that uh, either, well, not even business owners, just people that are in the local that work in Carterville. It, it is a great thing for them to do because it will help them with their businesses. But at the end of the day, that's only a small, small part of it for sure. It's so funny that you said that. I agree with you, Patrick. I, I know when um, people know that you've gone through leadership, it's like a, it's like a two steps you don't even have to go through now because it's like, no, I know you're good people. I know exactly. I know. I remember meeting one of um, uh, Missy Marshall for the first mm -hmm. time, and the first thing she said, "Well, your family. You've already gone through leadership. Your family. I know exactly. You know, it's like we have the same beliefs, and we, um, and what is it that I can do to support? And so, um, I really do consider each of you a uh, family in our class, and every person that we've met. Um, it really does create relationships that really, as you say, it transcend beyond the the activities. It's just, um, you know, I, it's just something it's hard to explain sometimes in words, but uh, I remember running into um, when we were able to have the, the night on the town, the square that night, mm -hmm. and uh, got a chance to meet your family, Patrick. And it was as if, you know, when I got a chance to meet your wife, I was like, she's family. I don't even have to, <laughs> you know, introduce myself. Um, she belongs to him, and I belong to her, too. So it was just good to be able to expand my personal network network, um, but I feel like um, they're relationships that I'll have for a lifetime. So um, definitely, it's just been a, a great experience, and um, I believe in this work. I really do. I believe in what we do, um, and I, I tell people all the time, I would do it uh, for free um, because I believe in it so much. Um, developing relationships are things that money can't buy. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, y'all know I'm a highly decorated optometrist and nationally recognized <laughs> and uh, have all kinds of awards, but uh, I have my plaque, my leadership plaque is at my sign-in, kind of at the check-in window, and it's, it's right there, and so people see it when they come in, and, and I've had several people, you know, comment about it, whether they, they've done it or they've known somebody that's done it and asked me about it, and so it's one of those things I'm, I'm more proud of than anything else, hardly. Well, awesome. Uh, Tasha, where can people find out more information or if they want to do an application? We'll, we'll probably share this definitely in some of the local groups, uh, the ones that will allow us to do it. But, um, and so we'll share links and stuff there as well. But um, where, where can they find out more info? Great. Right. Um, so we can be found at leadership.org, our website. Um, you can go to our website and click either on adult or youth, 
and uh, learn more about the class um, and how to apply. It's a pretty um, straightforward um, application. And um, just so folks know the timeline, our application is open through uh, November 30th. We'd like to try to get all of them in really soon. Yeah. And uh, the week of uh, December 1st is when we'll notify folks um, of um, you know, their acceptance into the class. And then we'll have um, an orientation for both groups um, mid-December, right before Christmas, so they know and can plan for uh, the class beginning in January. Awesome. So is it is it leadershipcardioville.org? Is that it right? is. Okay. It is. All right, yep. leadershipcardioville.org. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that's all I got, unless y'all got anything else to throw in, but I really appreciate you coming on today, Tasha. Thank you for having yeah, thank me. You. And right. I, I, I don't normally do this, but like, if folks want to call me, um, I'm happy to share my number. Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, area code 901-262-4063. If you have questions and you want to learn more or um, you're just not sure um, if this is a fit for you, um, uh, after we talk, I imagine that we can uh, find a place where uh, you might fit into this amazing program. So i um, open to any calls or um, any support that folks would like to um, to share. I also like to also ask before you, you ask me to plug, so you know I'm going to talk. Um, um, there are some students in our town, and um, many of them um, are interested in our program. And uh, they may not be able to themselves or their families be able to afford the class. Um, if you are interested in sponsorship, sponsoring a kid, um, the cost is really nominal, $350 for them to go through the class. If you'd like to sponsor a kid, we really appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to set up a scholarship in honor of someone special in your family, um, those are uh, other giving options that we have. So you can call me and we can certainly talk about it, uh, but the money goes directly um, to supporting children and students and uh, youth who are interested in the program. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it so much. Uh, thank, thank you for you. coming on. And uh, hopefully we got uh, two really full classes uh, to start off the new year. Uh, I, anybody that does it, they definitely won't regret it. They'll, uh, it will be uh, impactful, not only as they're doing it, but uh, for the rest of their lives, for sure. So, uh, awesome. Well, that's all I got. So, thank you again for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having Bye. me. All right. Y'all have a good day. Bye. Bye.